Today I want to tell you about 10 ships I think really benefit from the new Starship Trait Vanguard Specialist from the legendary Jem'Hadar pilot attack ship. Which ships are those? Well, they're ships that have a commander engineering seat and full intel specialization. Why is that? Let's take a look at what Vanguard Specialist does. It gives you 33% cooldown reduction, as well as extending the duration by 5 seconds of a firing mode from each of the 5 major specializations. If we take a look at each one in turn, we see Suppression Barrage from Command, which already was capable of 100% uptime and was usable with other firing modes, so it didn't really need any help and doesn't get much benefit from here. Temporal has recursive shearing, which was already good, and while it's better now, it didn't really need the help, so there's nothing really too exciting here. Exceed rated limits and reroute reserves to weapons from Miracle Worker and Pilot, respectively, were both pretty bad before, and while they are better now, they're not really better enough to consider using over other options. The only one that really got elevated from something you didn't really want to use to something you do want to use is surgical strikes from the intel specialization. If you take a look at any ship that has at least a commander tactical or a commander science seat, there's something good you can put in that commander slot regardless of what build you're doing. But if you're talking about a ship with a commander engineering seat, then there isn't really anything good to do with that commander power. So you have to depend on your specialization to give you something good to use instead. In the past, when people were using Ox to Bat more, you could put Ox to Bat 3 in that slot, but people don't really do that anymore since Photonic Officer was buffed and we have the Boimler trait. If you have one of these 10 ships that has a commander engineering seat and full intel, in the past, you would have felt kind of bad, like there wasn't any real major build you could put on it that you weren't sacrificing for. You could do beam overload or fire at will, but that was about it. If you wanted to use cannons, you'd have to use a lower rank of their abilities, and while that wouldn't hurt you too much because you don't need any of this stuff to begin with, you could just fly a tier 5 ship and be happy, you're going to feel the whole time you're flying it like you're flying a ship that doesn't really capable of doing anything all that good. So which 10 ships are those? Well, we got four legendary ships. First up from the 10th anniversary bundle is the legendary Kelvin Constitution Intel Battlecruiser. I said at the time that it felt like an off-brand Vengeance, and that ship may make an appearance later on the list. Next up from the 11th anniversary bundle is the legendary Ambassador class, which is probably going to come out as being the most powerful of these 10 ships, because it's the only one that's also capable of running Recursive Shearing Rank 1. Then we have two relatively standalone legendary ships, the legendary D7 and the legendary Galaxy Dreadnought Cruiser, each of which came in a single legendary pack bundle. There's also three Sea Store ships, two of which date back to the Delta expansion. We have the Eclipse Intel Battlecruiser and the Quib Intel Battlecruiser, which is the KDF and Federation versions, respectively. You also have the Cardassian Intel Gimmer Flight Deck Carrier, which has been a player favorite for many years since it came out. It also has a super useful trait that a lot of people like to get called Calm Before the Storm because it gives you some fire cycle haste as well as some damage resistance and it came in the big gamma vanguard pack so a lot of you probably already have it then we have three ships that are premium ships but they're either available from MUD's Market or they're available as event campaign rewards. The first is the Sona Intel Battlecruiser, which is available in a MUD bundle, and a lot of you probably already have it if you've had the chance to get it because it comes with subspatial warheads, which gives you those juicy isolytic tears. It's one of the best traits in the game, but sadly people have always felt like it just didn't quite measure up as a ship and now you can run a Surgical Strikes build on it and have a lot of fun. Next up is the Cleave Battleship, also known as the Noxjej, and it is available as well in a MUDS bundle, and a lot of you may have already picked it up as well because it has Ceaseless Momentum, which is another great trait for torpedoes, but if you actually wanted to use the ship itself, 
now you have a really good option because you can slap surgical strikes on there. The last ship is the aforementioned Vengeance, which is available as an event campaign reward and is also available in a MUDS bundle. And it's been a fan favorite and a crowd pleaser for many, many years. It used to be one of the only ships that could compete with the Romulan ships before cross-faction flying and all of that stuff. I'm sure most of you already have it. It's a ship that's very, very very popular. It was pretty good already, but now it's even better. There is one more 11th ship that technically meets this criteria. It has a commander engineering and is a full intel ship. However, it is currently only available as a gambling exclusive, and it will probably be that way for the foreseeable future for at least a year so I'm not going to mention its name. So that concludes my video. If you picked up the legendary Jem'Hadar pilot attack ship and you're itching to try out the new trait and you happen to have one of the other 10 ships I mentioned today, then I recommend going out and giving it a try and having some fun with it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. A special thank you to my channel members. As always, take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.